Hello everybody, this is Infinim here, coming up with a video today on a trail lead counter with Darth Vader, coming up against Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. So let's go through this counter, let's go right into the battle, and then we'll proceed to go over to modding. So one thing that we can do over here is give straight the, the weapon attack over to Darth Vader, and Supreme Leader Kylo Ren always opens up with his stab ability, which is going to dispel the taunt. Now, one very important thing to know is that if a character is stunned, he will always prioritize that character to siphon the stats from, so he will always do the AoE targeting your Kylo Ren and Mast. And now he's going to do his AoE. So for this reason here, where we have to tank uh, the AoE, a character like Thrawn, who is at relic level, will tank it. A character like Treya, who I have a G13, will also tank it. A character like Quatembor, who is year 11, will not tank it. So what you can afford to have him die, if you have him at relics even better, it makes this a whole lot easier. But if you do happen to have your um, Thrawn at G13, you will need him at that gear level. Now Quatembor can pass up. Treya, you can leave her at gear 12, some left side pieces, that will be fine. But when it comes down to Thrawn, you make sure that you want to have him tanky enough. And Vader, well, he's your DPS, he's gonna be Relic 7 most likely. You'll sure as hell want him really tanky. Uh, and this is a Relic 7 Kylo Ren and Mast, he comes with the requirements for Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, so it's always a character that you can accept having at somewhat of a high gear. Uh, so here, first things first, we have one of the taunts to deal with, and uh, what we're going to choose to do here is TM swap over to Treya and isolate Stormtrooper. The benefit to isolating Stormtrooper over Kylo Ren and Mast is the 100% counter chance on Kylo Ren and Mast, which we're going to see how useful it is later, and also the fact that when we isolate Stormtrooper and he does his taunt move, he will not be giving to the the team his 25% turn meter, which actually can really screw up some orders in regards of how this team goes. So he can advance further. They do stun Vader. This is actually a pretty gnarly scenario where they have Vader really tied down to the corner, almost dead. But do not forget that Trey's lead will dispel that stun, and once Vader goes into Merciless Massacre, everything starts popping. Also, Sith Trooper did assist twice, once when, um, actually three times at this point, because of all of the assists, the attacks out of turn will do 35% max health damage over to Sith Trooper, which will make our job of killing him a lot easier. That is one of the issues that we had on the Gas Vader counter, that in here we actually eliminate. So we can go right over that, as we will just slot into Merciless at this point, which we do in here. <laughs> Just waiting for my old me to do this. And now we do the dots on the isolated character. We bop Sith Trooper despite the crit hit immunity because of all of the assists that he had done before. Uh, he kind of kills himself, which makes him a lot easier to, to kill. And now we try to go for ability blocks on Hux, ability blocks on Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. And we do, this basic here is pretty interesting, right? Because crew does have advantage, but he does counterattack, and he loses it when he crits over on Vader. What does this mean? Well, you can actually crit uh, Kylo Ren and Mast when you throw the Saber, which kills him. And from here, you're going to Fracture and Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. The only other concern that you might have in this counter is Hux. Because Hux doesn't have an ability block, an ability block right now, and he can TM swap back to Kylo, cleanse all of the debuffs, cleanse the ability blocks, and you will want those debuffs to go for the Culling Blade and kill Supreme Leader Kylo. So let's move further. We can afford to do that. Didn't land the ability block there, but Trey managed to pull it off. We could actually, we actually should just basic Hux at this point, because then we can go Merciless, AoE on Stormtrooper, and then Bob Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. However, even if you decide to play it out a little bit differently, that's still fine. Look at that third meter that um, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren didn't get. If it's a fast Fost, it will make sense to have that isolate there, uh, as opposed to Kylo Ren and Mast, and also that guaranteed way of getting rid of his advantage. You kill Kylo Ren, and now just go after Stormtrooper, and it's an easy win. 
And this is the exact same comp that we used yesterday, uh, or two days ago, to beat Sith Eternal Emperor. This same comp actually also beats Darth Revan. It's a super versatile comp. And let's go back to the modding. So this is the same modding that we used back then, but we do have 265 speed. We have the crit damage triangle, not even slice to 60. We have around 100% potency, which Treya increases to 40%, uh, increases by 40% even, so to 143%. We have some damage, not that much at Relic 7, and we want to make sure that we have above 75% crit chance, so when Vader is under Merciless, he will make sure that he will crit. Now, next we have Grand Admiral Thrawn. Grand Admiral Thrawn will want to be 304 speed, well, he wants to be fast, most likely, and uh, in this case scenario, you don't really need to be concerned with the turn order in regards to Thrawn and Wat Tambor. You just want him to, ha to be relatively fast. You do not want your Thrawn, however, uh, to TM swap to Treya and be so fast to a point where he would actually take two turns in a row and go from TM swapping to Treya to having his fracture available on one of the tanks. That would not be ideal. And then we have some uh, health and protection marks that if you have them at a lower relic than I do, I have my throne relic 5, you might have them at a lower uh, relic level but have some more protection or more health than I did in this situation. Kylo Ren and Mass actually have him modded the same way I have in Arena. He's just health modded, just to tank some hits because that's how he works in regards with his health unique. Uh, but if you want to rock another pre-taunt like Sith Empire Trooper, like Shore Trooper, like L3, and have them more protection oriented, that's probably even better uh, in regards to how the protection uh, tank tech goes, if you ever get to that point with your Wat Tambor tech. But nonetheless, still works pretty well with uh, Wat Tem uh, with uh, Kylo Ren and Mast. Uh, our boy Wat Tambor here, 6 star gear 11, only puts the weapon tech, doesn't really matter what these stats do. Uh, given that he dies so early in the battle. Uh, if you can, potency cross isn't that bad, given that he tries to apply dots uh, when he's attacking out of turn. Against Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, probably not the best, but if you're still going for a versatile build where you want to use Wat Tambor against other things like GL Ray, this is still a build that works. Um, I mean, you can literally use this team and swap Vader for the leadership as opposed to Trey. You can still beat GL Ray. This team is amazing in regards to beating Galactic Legends. And here we have Darth Trey. Uh, she's G13 Relic Zero. She has 252 speed, and she has some thickness into her, 50k health, 66k protection, just so she can take some of those hits over from uh, the other Galactic Legends. This will be all for the video. Hope you guys enjoy this team as much as I do. It's a brilliant team that I can use on offense to take out anything in regards to uh, GL counters, beating Darth Revan. It's a pretty fun team, really enjoy it. I uh, hope you guys have the rest of a good day and see you all soon. If you liked the video, please leave a like, leave a comment, and if you want to stay tuned for a Light Side TV series, and we'll be starting very soon, where you'll see some more of these PowerPoint slides, make sure to leave that subscribe button as well. We'd really appreciate it. And that will be all. Bye-bye.